Don't you just love watching television? Turning on the TV set almost seems like second nature to most of us. Whether we're relaxing, looking for information, or just spending time with others. We have to admit, we love having the TV on. I know I do. I'm Tito Pell. Keep your TV sets on. And join me tonight as we take a closer look at something we've all been looking at for the longest time. Television. According to the most recent available statistics, the Philippines has 3.7 million TV sets. It would be easy to guess that today, the number has climbed up to 3.9 million or even 4 million. A study in the United States done by the National Institute on Media and the Family in 1999 revealed that the average American child watches 25 hours of television each week. The study also showed that a notable percentage of families often have the TV on during dinner or even when no one is watching. Noticeably, many children often watch educational shows, but only a little more than half of the families surveyed had any house rules on TV watching. This means that most of the time, anything goes. In the Philippines, prime time runs from 6 to 11 p.m., which means Families are watching TV during dinner. In addition, many households have their TV on much of the daytime too. And the audience would include mothers, caregivers, maids, and young children. It makes me wonder how much more exposed to TV the Filipino family is. Here, where a TV set sits on nearly every household. Carinderia, beauty parlor, and Sari Sari store. Here, where anyone can watch TV even through the neighbor's window. Here, where a colored TV set can be bought for 2,000 pesos. We all know that the TV has many uses. It can be a good source of knowledge and information. It can stimulate the mind. It can challenge us. But for many Filipino families, it is simply entertainment. TV serves many functions. I will, I will never... I will never, never want TV to be just purely for educational purposes. You know, we all want our entertainment. Mm -hmm. you know? And um, I think especially in urban environments where you have less options mm -hmm. um, and, and in an economic, in a social economic context like ours, it plays a greater role. TV shows are available and accessible to all. In other words, what we view on TV as adults can be easily viewed by children. And that should make us stop and think. First of all, TV is the medium that young people, children and young people are most comfortable with. Mm -hmm. So there's an easy affinity there. You know, it's, uh, it, it responds to, their, to many of them, you know, the, the learning style, which is um, visual you know, and um, also um, the pace is very attractive to them. Aside from mass impressionable shop, children, what they see, uh, because they, they learn through their senses, no? so what is vis audiovisual is very powerful mm -hmm. no? next to what they touch and smell and, and manipulate no? or hear directly. Mm -hmm. no? It's the second most um, powerful medium or mode of relating to the world. You know? There's nothing wrong with TV being so popular in our society. But something is definitely wrong when we allow it to take over our families and relationships in the home. Sport, basketball, boxing, game show. Marami po nalalaman tungkol po sa mga science. Cartoon network. Balita po. Tsaka po cartoons. Para po nalalaman po yung mga nangyayari. Balita po. Doon po ina-announce yung may bagyo. Channel 9. WWJD. Ma information Favorite ko yung sa cooking eh. Every Saturday. Educational, ganyan. Meron Christian values. Kung Rebilla. Kasi po, magaling po bumarin. Gusto kong gayain si Robin Padilla. Magaling din po siya bumarin. Ah, gusto mo para makapagbarilan? Oo, oh, hindi po. Ano <laughs> lang? Mm, po para po makagante. There is no doubt about TV's huge part in our daily routines. Over the years, TV has become a convenient fixture in our lives. 
as provider of news and information, entertainment, as well as sex and violence. Some parents talk to us about how sex and violence have seeped into homes and their stories may just sound familiar to you. We were having lunch or dinner, so just having a meal, okay? And your typical meal conversation led to my daughter saying, okay, daddy, why don't you give mommy a kiss, okay? So we all found it cute, okay, giggle, giggle, giggle. And my son, who was just having his food, eating his food, very casually says, Yes, Daddy, why don't you use your tongue? So I asked my son in the most natural way I could at that particular point in time, and I felt like collapsing. So where did you see this? And he goes very shyly, he said, No, 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 nothing, nothing, nothing. So I, I volunteered for him. You saw that on TV? And he just nodded his head, yeah. Siguro kailangan ano eh, bantayan talaga. No? Uh, kasi kahit na general patronage yung sinasabi, minsan merong kissing scene, may pinapakita na hindi dapat makita ng bata. Meron akong na, na dinalaw ng isang magulang na nahuli niya ang kanyang anak na hinahalikan sa, sa lips yung kapwa bata niya. At tapos kinausap niya ngayon bakit niya ginawa yun. Kasi nakita niya sa telebisyon. Karamihan ngayon, like yung sa commercial, si mga hard drinks, sinasamahan nila ng mga babae eh, na naka-two-piece na lang. Kasi yun nga ang ano nila, pagka-hard drinks, pang-akit na nga talaga sa mga lalaki yon So ang mga bata ngayon, nagkakaroon ng malis ngayon kahit na nag nagkatabi lang yung classmate nila. Violence is also pervasive in TV, and that means we have allowed it to come into our homes as well. PCTVF did a violence study, meet the first study on TV violence in the Philippines the other year. Uh, every, every six to ten minutes, a child sees an act of violence. That's how frequent it is. Okay. Okay. Uh, the kind of violence that there is, very physical and a lot of weapons, mm -hmm. and fist fights. Mm -hmm. Yun ang cho yung choice, violence of choice ah, <laughs> sa Philippine television. Some teachers talk to us about their pupils' performance at school. Do you notice the same things about your kids? Especially sa mga small kids, makikita natin yung na imitate nila yung ano, yung mga, for example, yung mga fight scenes sa uh, cartoons. And they tend to imitate kasi parang kala nila, ano, totoo dating sa kanila. Eh. Pero in reality, talagang minsan nakakasakitan sila. Mas behaves yung less ang TV viewing. Mas concentrated siya sa work niya. Yung nanonood, nagmamanifest sa mga salita nila. Yung napapanood nila. Yung mga nanonood ng TV, lalo na yung mga cartoons na tagang promoted yung mga wars. So, masyado lang silang active. So pag masyadong active, masyadong war freak. Suntukan, away-away. Compared to hindi mga nanood ng TV, just stay lang in one place or just read or something, play. Maraming mga programs ngayon na inaalaw na nila yung mga bata na manood. Pero actually, kung titignan mo yung content, pang adult talaga eh. So yung innocence ng bata, hindi na pe-preserve. I have to admit, I've always known that TV shows have somehow been downgraded since the time when I was a kid myself. But I never thought it would be this harmful for kids. And as a parent myself, I don't think I can sit still without doing anything about it. Unfortunately, that's what most of us have been doing for the longest time. I think the, the danger of what's happening now is uh, in the word apathy. I think there's a lot of that already, both in society and even on, in television. People are less interested now to get involved. You know, I would rather just stay in my own area so that even if I have something to contribute, I'll just keep quiet. Apathy is a strong word to describe our attitude towards television. But if we ask ourselves honestly, we may find that it's the accurate term to use. Unfortunately, it's not just our indifference to television that hurts our children. It is also our lack of alertness in guarding them against TV. 
We may screen the shows with obvious sexual and violent content. We may switch channels when profanity is heard. But do we really guard against the subtle negative messages of television? Or just maybe, we don't know enough about it to spot it ourselves. We're not learning well enough to be media literate. You know? um, we're not critical viewers. In quality standards natin for what makes good TV is very low. The worst thing that, that adults in general are doing is really Unre yung deregulated ang TV viewing. No? Unregulated and deregulated. Very few parents set limits and monitor what are you watching, mm -hmm. no? why are you watching that. So far, we've been taking a closer look at a constant family companion that we've always watched but never really truly watched. Whether we like it or not, this is what our kids are digesting every day while we are at work or while we are busy cooking dinner and cleaning the house. The question is, what do we do about it? Nag-usap kami ng nanay ko po na isang oras lang. I can watch TV as long as I want. Pag may homework, hindi ako pwede. Pag, pag wala, pwede. Pagka po may pasok, tatlong oras lang po. Pero pagka po weekdays or holidays, six hours. magugulong kayawan ng mga kwento-kwento ng mga kabataan. Yung mga drama po, kakaiya. Hindi ko gusto yung mga basos. Ayoko po ng wrestling dahil nagsasapahan. Helen Novella po, nag uh, nagsasampa lang po. Kasi po baka gayahin ng iba po. Baka manangkol na lang po bigla ng iba. Mga ano po, yung mga cartoons po na may kera yung nag-aaway-aaway po. Para po may, may matutunan po ako kasi po pag inaaway po ako, meron po ako palaban. This is what's happening little by little to our children. When we go to work, while we busy ourselves with our business, while we occupy our time with house chores. Some of us think this is even cute and innocent fun. But is it? Really? As parents, we need to be more discerning when we watch TV with our kids. It's good that we screen out profanity, sex, and violence. But there's a lot more on TV that we must be aware of. According to the Public Television Outreach Alliance, here are some things we should be careful about. Identify how conflict is resolved on the program and decide to agree with the solution or to find a better way to resolve the conflict. If the solution is too violent or morally unacceptable, think of different ways that the story could have ended. Recognize the stereotypes being perpetuated on television. Don't be carried away by the funny jokes or the dramatic scenes. Look closely at how characters are portrayed and treated. Identify what else is being sold besides the product in TV commercials. It's also values, personas, role models, and the like. Take care not to believe everything you hear and see on television. Neither accept the TV as representing real life. Not everything we see on TV is reality. Let's not forget that. No matter how good the acting is or how emotional the music gets. Always question the reliability or bias of information sources on TV, such as news or documentaries. Not all news or documentary shows are true and objective. Don't easily believe that their portrayal of reality is fair and accurate. Don't just accept the opinions being aired by news anchors or hosts. The young minds of our children take in more of what the TV says than what we as parents teach them. Without a doubt, the TV's role in our family has to change. But the question is, how far are we willing to go to turn around our family's TV viewing habits? Do we really need to be 
out, both of us out, working so that we can pay the bills? Or is our child's growing up more important than anything else? Because what will happen is it will be the TV that will educate them instead of uh, themselves trying to set the standards. It will be the standards of what is given on TV. And since we don't have any control, I mean, on TV, it's like everybody's standards. Granted, nobody wants to make the TV the designated babysitter of the household. But what do we do when both parents are busy with work and simply can't monitor their child's viewing habits 24 hours a day? One good solution would be to set rules and regulations for them. Have specific times. Know the schedule of the programs and tell them no TV time during this, this time only or, or a list of to watch programs. Only this. And uh, you need to brief your helpers if you have helpers. If, you have your, if you're living with your in-laws, then you know, these are the only ones to watch. And that everybody should cooperate. Here are some helpful tips from the Media Awareness Network. Decide if children can watch television on school days, and if so, for how long. Determine how much television can be watched on weekends. Be clear about the time a child can watch television. Establish rules about finishing homework, practicing, reading, or doing chores before watching TV. Don't forget to check on your children, either by talking casually with them or calling from the office to know what they are viewing on TV. Most of all, if you find the show or portions of a show objectionable, write to the kapisana ng mga broadcaster sa Pilipinas for they are tasked to police their own ranks. Write your name, the time and channel or station, the name of the program, and the date when you watched it. And give the reasons why you found it offensive. And if we call you for the hearing, be there. The Thailand novelas. My wife loves to watch those uh, shows. And sometimes my kids also watch with her. And there are scenes in Sana Male, in the Thailand novelas. Me and my wife talk about it. And mga scenes na ganyan, eh, hindi dapat makita ng mga bata. Meron nga tayong mentality na kawawa, uh, mahirap lang. Kaya ang kumikita talaga yung mga palabas na pang kawawa, na inapi-api. Ang mga Pilipino, pag nakapanood niyan, touch yung emotion. Parang ako ito ah. Ang buhay ng taong yun, kawawa na rin talaga. At baguhin natin kaisipan, maging matalino tayo. I mean, uh, if that particular na palabas, wala siya na i-contribute din, alisin mo na. He very much wants them to contribute to building a world that's fit for human beings to, to live in. A world where people care about people and the environment and, and, and the now the present and, and the future, and where there's constructive problem solving. If he were a producer, he'd call his shots right there and then. He would set the standard and stay there. Not uh, because remember when, uh, when the Pharisees were against him, he did not play with the Pharisees and, and you know, in, in a sense, uh, uh, dance to their uh, music. He did not. The Bible says, uh, Whatever is good, whatever is noble, whatever is uh, holy, think of these things. These are excellent things. Then put that in your program. Do programs that are noble, that are uh, uplifting, not downgrading. Television, like the telephone, is one of God's greatest gifts to mankind. If used properly by both the networks as the producers and the public as the audience, it has a lot of potential to do much good. Television becomes bad only when we give it the authority we as parents should have over our children. It becomes wrong when we relinquish to it the responsibility to care for our children. The Bible doesn't say we should let television shape our values or set our standards. Rather, Deuteronomy chapter 6 says, we, the parents, should be the ones to teach our children God's laws. 
we must spend time with them so that we can mold their character according to the standards God has set. Remember, he who spends the most time with our children will be the one to influence them. And so, before you give that remote control to your children, stop and consider, if Jesus were in your place, what would Jesus do?